Edith was a Hungarian Jew living in what is modern-day Slovakia. Her father was a tailor, her mother a civil servant. A keen dancer and gymnast, she was training for the Hungarian Olympic team. In March 1944, when Edith was 16, Hungarian Nazis came to her house and arrested her family. They were sent to Auschwitz, where almost immediately her mother and father were killed in the gas chambers. Edith and her sister Magda survived the camp and a death march into Austria, where they were liberated by US troops. In 1949, Edith, her young family and her sister emigrated to the US and 20 years later, Edith qualified as a psychologist. Well, I'm delighted to say Edith is with us now. Very good morning to you, Edith. We were just uh, checking on age things, which I know you're happy to talk about because you've just, you just had a birthday, haven't you? I just had my 91st birthday. I think young. And I live in a present. Well, and it's, I can only touch you now. It's a very well, good point. It is an absolutely. It's a very good point. And I just look, the the book is uh, the choice, and the the phrase on the on the front cover is "Even in Hell," the reference to Auschwitz. Hope can flower. Yes. Uh, there that is, is a, a gift philosophy. in everything. That is your philosophy. That is what where, what you believe fundamentally. I think Auschwitz was an opportunity for us to discover traits we never thought was possible, to be able to take care of each other. Because if you were only for the me, 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 you didn't make it. You know, when we arrived, many people attacked the guards and they were shot right away. Or many people would run into the barbed wires and they got electrocuted. And I think in Auschwitz, uh, I learned how to find from within when nothing came from without. And today I tell people that dependency can breed depression, that if you don't love yourself, then how can I love you? So self-love is self-care. It's not narcissistic. How long did it take you to get to this place? Because when I read your book and I looked at I read about what you, your sister, losing your mum in the camp there as well, what you went through. Yeah. I, I understand how people don't, could, could not come back from that. And yet you, you're sitting here composed. One of the first things you say to us is you, you live in the present. You help, your career is about helping people who have suffered traumas, can't quite figure out what's upsetting them and, and holding them back in life. How long has it taken you to get here? I'm still in a process of becoming, I have yet to arrive. Um, but as I get older, I also get wiser. I usually tell women that you're not smart, you're wise. I think God built us in such a way that our cortex is built differently. That's why we call men thick-headed, you know, that they want to figure everything out but we come from the heart and soul. I think Auschwitz was a schoolroom, and I found that I couldn't be today what I am, guiding people from victimization to empowerment. Edith, there are, there are moments in time in the book, and there's so many of them, which when you're reading it, I had to stop and just uh, you know, take a breath to, to try and grasp what you're in. I, would you just explain the moment when you, your sister, and your mother are in a line yes. and you're being asked your ages yes. and that determined which line you're going into. Could you just explain yes. that moment and the significance of it? Yes. Uh, uh, I was born into a very talented family and my parents had two beautiful girls and then they wanted a son and I came along. So I was the runt in my family. My sister Clara was the only Jewish girl accepted in the music conservatory in Budapest. And her Christian professor smuggled her out. And I think I need to mention that. Um, and uh, so they were beautiful people who risked their lives to save others. So we arrived in Auschwitz with my older sister, Magda, and I held our mother in the middle. 
and there is this guy and points this way and that way and and points to the mother and uh, and then he asked me is is he your sister or your mother my mother was in her forties and I never could forgive myself that I said it's my mother so I pointed to the left and I followed her and he grabbed me and looked me in the eye and said, you're going to see your mother very soon. She's just going to take a shower and promptly threw me on the other side, which meant life. And your mother? My mother was murdered in the gas chamber, my father as well. And so when I arrived in a place called Birkenau, I asked, when will I see my mother? And uh, this couple pointed at the chimney and said, your mother is burning there. You better talk about her in past tense. You know, in America, children were separated from their parents. And I had tremendous nightmares still picturing that. So I, I never forget or overcame, but I came to terms with that, that my parents had to die. So I can talk today uh, to do everything in my power. So your children and grandchildren will never ever experience what I did. And we are grateful to you for this, um, so much so. In this book, The Choice, I want to stress as well there is joy in this book because there is joy in how you have made a life for yourself. And there is love in the book as there well. There is love and it's one of the most beautiful gift of God is a gift of memory. And so this book will tell you I'm honoring my parents that they didn't die in vain. And uh, fascinating, I mean, there are so many points, Charlie, as you said, there's so many points to pick up on. Your story of love with your husband, when you, because you then moved to America. Yeah. That was a, a monumentous decision yeah. to make between yeah. you and your husband. And you, that love story as well, yeah. isn't, it's quite unexpected. Without spoiling it, it's, it's a great thing to kind of put in the book to show that there is hope despite all the battles that people pace, face. And one of the other things that I think is really important, we're seeing some of those lovely pictures now, is that later on in the book, you make the point that there's no point comparing trauma is there you, you know you, there's not a sliding scale of who's been traumatized most no. and it's what you feel inside so it could be something on the face of it seems relatively minor and you talk to people who yes. come to you with problems and it, they could seem quite minor but that's not what matters because it yes. can feel it's you how don't you feel. measure it uh, um, women come to me and I don't know how I can talk to you because you were in Auschwitz and I was sexually abused and I tell her you were more abused than I was because I knew who was the enemy. I think it's very important not to measure. You see, I was told every day that I'm subhuman and I'm never going to get out of here alive. And they could kill me any moment. They tortured me but they could never murder my spirit. And that's what I bring to you today, that the spirit never dies. You have it when you're born, you have it when you die. And uh, my parents' spirit is with me here at BBC. Did I ever dream of my life that I'm going to be here in, in Manchester with you? Life is full of wonderful surprises. I tell you, the one thing I would say, Edith, is, and I hope people at home are feeling this too, because sitting with you here, you can feel that spirit, yeah. absolutely. Thank and I'm you. sure it's coming across I'm to people fired out there as well. Up. 91 is just a number. Don't worry about chronological age. You're as young as you feel. It has been an honor talking to you yes, today. So um, I hope to be a good role model, especially to women, not to think about the chronological age, because we are here truly to tell our children that there is hope in hopelessness and not to spoil your children and not to really allow anybody to define who you are. You're beautiful because God doesn't make junk. You're one of a kind. 
So I, I come that. to celebrate your beauty here with you. And the morning time is the most important time because you get up and you look in the mirror and you say, I'm going to have a beautiful day. And you know what? No one can mess with that. I want people to reclaim their power, that to choose their way of thinking about it, not to react, but how to respond. I, I feel like we ought to sort of invent a new slot, like an Edith moment. Edith, every Edith morning, it's just like have an Edith moment. Or we're just going to keep you. With, we're not going to let you leave the office. We're just going to keep you with us and uh, inspire us every you. day. I Edith, tell you, I tell you what happened to Edith in Dublin. I had a wonderful interview with Ray uh, Darcy, and he asked me to dance. No one ever. Who interviewed well, of me course, because because you're a trained dancer and you high kick your <laughs> way in um, in all times. I know you're not going to do it now, but um, look, people can hit, find out so much more about you. You're a fascinating woman. Um, thank you. Thank you so much so for joining. So are you. Oh, Edith. Um, Edith's book is called The Choice. Absolute joy talking to you. Thank you.